Hey guys, my name is Josh, and today we're going to take a look at getting the uh, new C Sharp 7 features working in Visual Studio. So um, the way we're going to do it today is we're going to look at the features slash patterns branch um, up on GitHub, and I've got it open here, and I'm comparing it to uh, this future branch. And the reason for that is I know with 100% certainty, uh, future will work. And I'm fairly confident we can get patterns to work. Um, I think, and, and I'm still not 100% sure on all this, that patterns builds off of future. Like I see down here that it was merged with future not too long ago. Um, we'll have to, we'll have to see. Um, I, I'm actually kind of worried now that I look at this date, September 13th, 2015, because I just recently in November made it so you could run uh, Roslyn in Visual Studio and dog food your changes. So this was before, so it might not be merged recently enough. We'll have to we'll have to find out. Anyways, what we will do is we will give it a shot and we'll hop over to Roslyn here. We'll pull down the repo. So I'm doing this from scratch uh, so you don't have to worry about having anything set up if you are interested in giving this a shot yourself and we'll just put it in my GitHub folder. This is going to take some time. Okay, so uh, it's pulled it all down. It's just going to check it all out. Um, what I'll do in the meantime is I'll hop down to the instructions for how to build this all. I think it might be in the wiki actually. Um, building, testing, debugging. Um, we're doing it on Windows, so I'm going to find instructions for building on Windows. Um, and you'll want to follow this if you're making any changes. It's all, uh, it's all there. It's all complete. So it says clone. That's what we're doing. This thing should almost be done. Um, but in the meantime, it says run the developer command prompt. So let's open that up. I wish they didn't have this custom command prompt for Visual Studio. I don't, like, does Linux ever have anything like that? Usually it just all gets put in the environment and variables, I thought. Anyways, uh, we're here. Now we want to get to my GitHub users. I think it's student is the name of this machine. Uh, documents slash GitHub slash Rosal. All right. And it says run restore CMD. Right, we'll make sure everything's done here first. Yeah, looks good. So we'll run restore CMD. Um, this restore CMD can be like a little bit deceiving. These first two things take like two seconds to download. And then the third, uh, restoring packages Roslyn, this one may take some time. Like when it says some time, it doesn't really tell you that sometimes it might take like 30 minutes. Like I, It may really take some time and it won't do anything uh, while you're doing this. So there's a couple things you could do. You could go into the script and you could replace the, actually here, I'll show you. Uh, we could replace the flag there that's making it quiet. Like uh, someone set it to be uh, not verbose. So build, or is it, or is it restore CMD, right? Yeah. So edit. I'm um, here. You can get rid of this. And rerun it and it will spit out all the noise that you want just kind of gives you this peace of mind that something's going on um, it restored really quick for me probably because I've done this before I'm not sure where it caches all these things but um, it, it or maybe the internet here is really good but the first two time the first time I did it it took forever and then I saw someone else on the uh, getter channel for Roslyn complain that it was taking a quite a long time for him to download too Okay, so next, um, due to this issue, we can't open it in Visual Studio immediately. We're going to have to uh, build. Um, before we build, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and change branches now. Um, I might have, maybe I should have done that before. So we'll go to Patterns. Let's see. Failure to check out branch. Well, we're just going to get rid of all our changes here. Patterns. And we'll try, actually, I will try restore again, just in case for some reason the dependencies are different on that branch. It takes quite a long time, actually. Uh, there's just a lot of files to update. Okay. And a, and a lot of history. Okay. 
features patterns. Well, looks like it's being actively worked on, if, according to this, one hour ago. So let's try restoring again, just to, to make sure. And if it's already there, it'll be quick. It only took like 10, 15 seconds the first time. You can do it. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to open a Stack Overflow question that helped me figure this out in the first place. Um, someone was asking the other day, how can they, they, you know, play with these experimental language features? Well, it turns out you should be able to like pass in this features patterns flag, um, and things should work. But um, there's a there's a bug there. Uh, they're they're fixing it. They they know it's there. It takes time. Um, but what you can do, as evidence down here. Um, is you can just go in and find all the places where it says is feature enabled and just tell it to return true. And that seems to work. Like uh, that's that's what I did. Um, I had to do it a few times. Like uh, th there's there's some there's some confusing things with that, but but it did work in the end. So hopefully I can get it working on this branch. Okay, great. That one did work. Now we will build with this command. I must build vmm rosalind.sln. I hardly ever use MS build from the command line, so I don't know what that is. Slash v may be verbose mute or something like that. Who knows? But this will take uh, a little bit of time. Okay, so now we are done. And we are ready for the next stage, which is opening Visual Studio. Uh, I've already got it from previous opens, so I'll just open her up. Um, the one you're looking for is rosalind.sln. There's a couple in there, I think. Uh, I made the mistake of opening one of these ones the first few times. But this is the one we want, um, at least if you want to test out in Visual Studio. And it has quite a few projects to load. 171. For the longest time, I couldn't uh, do anything with this code base because I was doing it all off of my laptop, this little thing with like four gigs of RAM. Um, and it turns out when you open like hundreds of projects, you need uh, you need all four gigs for the Visual Studio process. <laughs> I like when you have a Chrome open as well. Um, even on this, this machine, which is, uh, you know, eight gigs of RAM, which isn't crazy, but should be enough for Visual Studio. It takes its time. So we will shrink all of these and try and find the one that we need. There's two things to notice here, here by the way. Um, <clears throat> and and we'll, we'll retouch on this as the video goes through, is um, there's, there's kind of like two compilers um, inside of Visual Studio. Um, one is, I wouldn't say there's two compilers. They, they both share the same code base and stuff, but there's one compiler running in Visual Studio, uh, compiling your code in the background, uh, you know, colorizing everything, doing all that Visual Studio stuff. But when you click F5 and build, it spins up another process, um, totally different like VSIX, like Visual Studio plugin for this one. Um, so when you make these changes that we're going to make, you have to make them, run the first project to get the Visual Studio compiler to, uh, to respond to your changes, and then run the secondary project and uh, get the out of process compiler to respond to your changes. Otherwise, when you press F5, uh, you'll just be getting error messages from that out of process compiler. Uh, that that actually happened to me. It cost me like like an hour and a half until I, I asked someone, and they just said, "Oh yeah, you're, you need to run the you need to run the right stuff." So it's probably this Visual Studio one. I always forget what the name of the project is we're looking for. I think it starts with a V. Visual Studio Setup, this is the one. So, without changing anything, we're just gonna press F5, see if we can even do this. Okay, so now we can prove to you that hopefully local functions and those sorts of things theoretically work, but it will complain that we haven't um, 
No, we haven't like set the right flag or something like that, right? Yeah, so this is the problem. Features local functions is uh, experimental, unsupported, use local functions to enable. So now it is our mission to find all the places where they are complaining about this stuff and fix them. We want to find um, this is feature enabled thing. Uh, I've already searched for it. So uh, we can find it and we'll just go to it. Um, and I see here that they have some demo flag that you can just use. Um, you know, I don't want to mess around with flags and hope that it works. Let's just return true. Let's try. Okay. So it looks like, yes, that did work. Um, it wasn't as hard as I thought. We just had to override that one place. Um, now I'll show you just really quickly that if we run this, um, it'll complain. Yeah, it'll say, it'll say nothing in the errors where you'd expect, but in the output from the out of process um, workspace, or compiler, we get this thing, local functions is experimental, which was kind of a pain because you're like, what? I just commented this thing out. Why is it not like doing things correctly? Well, in order to get that working, we can just go, let me actually double check the project. Uh, it's, it's listed here, actually. Same file as before, a bugging, building, debugging, testing on Windows, um, compiler extension. So let's Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. Uh, set as startup project. Come on. Set as startup project. Does it not go bold? Oh, okay. It just wasn't going bold while it was being searched for, I guess. Okay. So. Now, I believe if we do control F5 and run again, or F5 if you want the debugger attached, but I, I think it goes a little quicker if I do control F5. Okay, so now we should have that working correctly. Let's throw a breakpoint in there. Can do it. And now we'll try running within our Visual Studio. If you've never done this before, this might seem weird, by the way. I've got like Visual Studio. Then if you use F5, you'll be, you know, debugging Visual Studio in Visual Studio. And then in that debugged version, I'm running a console app. So, so it can be kind of weird, kind of meta like that. That's actually uh, the reason I keep them different colors. Uh, so I don't forget which one I'm in. Don't get mixed up. So yes, look, it worked. Everything is great in the world. Everything works properly. We can use uh, local functions and probably the binary thing and probably features. And if I can do features, then the next video that will be released will be uh, the um, demonstration of, or not features, sorry, a uh, pattern matching. That's what I was trying to say. It will be uh, the demonstration of pattern matching. So that's cool. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully uh, it worked for you. Um, I'll put the steps also in the description and maybe I'll put a short blog post together about how to get this up and running because it's not, it's not hard, but if you do some of these things in the wrong order, things just never seem to recover. It's it took me a few tries to get the, the steps just to happen just the right way, but everything works. Everything's great. Uh, thanks for watching and, and check out the next video.